Good morning, and welcome to the visual worship service of the Presbyterian Church of Easton. We welcome, welcome all first-time visitors and hope you will continue to join us for the Sunday service. If you have not done so, you can go to the home page on the top right-hand corner. You can hit bulletin and follow us, follow the service. I have a few exciting announcements to share today. Next Sunday, June 21st at 10 a.m., we will have our first in-person worship service. By now, you should have received your letter from Susan detailing the requirements for us to open our doors to worship. Please review them carefully as there are many steps to be followed. For those that feel they are not quite ready to return to church, you can continue to follow the service on PCEaston.com. Also starting on next Wednesday, June 17th, Reverend Bennett will be leading a Bible study on prayer. All the details on this can be found in your tidbits. We want to thank all that have been keeping up with their offerings to the church. Beginning to hold services at the church will incur some extra expenses, so staying current with your giving is much appreciated. We want to thank Kim Cassidy for answering the phone in the church office for the last few months. He was always ready to answer any questions you may have about the ongoing church situation. Ann McNulty will now be taking over for Kim. She will be available on Tuesdays from 9.30 to 11. If you have any questions, give her a call and she will be happy to speak with you. Let us now worship God. Please join me this morning in responsively in our call to worship. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous our God is merciful. What shall we return to the Lord for all his bounty to us? We will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us worship God.
Relying on grace and grace alone, let us come to God in repentance, confessing our sins to God and to each other. Join me in this morning's prayer of confession. Gracious God, we confess that we are not always grateful for the abundant life we have in Jesus. Complain, we, we refuse to be satisfied. Forgive us, Lord. Help us to keep our eyes and our hearts focused on you. And be thankful always for your love and provision. Please hear us now as we continue our confession in silence. Amen. God has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Friends, give thanks again for the great news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Today's first scripture lesson is taken from Psalm 116, verse 1 and 2, and 12 to 19. This is a psalm of thanksgiving. In this scripture, God is thanked for listening and answering his children when they call to him. There are many reasons for loving the Lord. He listens with loving kindness. He hears our voice. If you are discouraged, Remember that God is near, listening to every prayer. Listen now to the word of God. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Our second scripture lesson this morning is taken from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. In these verses, we know we are complete with Christ. We enjoy the peace of knowing God even with daily problems we face. We will not get discouraged, but will depend on the power from Christ. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to his grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, 
but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. Because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we're still we're sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. My mother was 86 when she died. This was a long time ago now. She had been fairly healthy uh, in her older years, for which I was thankful, and she was not afraid of death, not at all. In fact, she couldn't wait to see Jesus. They had a big thing going. She wasn't afraid of death, but she was afraid of pain and suffering. And she would say, I don't think I'd be a very good patient. Well, I couldn't really argue with her. I don't think she would have been a very good patient either. So what happened to her was that one night she um, died in her sleep of a cerebral aneurysm. She went to sleep feeling okay, and she just never woke up. So when that happened, of course, I was sad. And you know, when someone that close dies, it's sort of like the world just shifts. So, um, of course I grieved, but in the meantime, there was this part of me <laughs> inside saying, you go, mom. I was, I was so relieved and really happy for her. Isn't that the death that we all wish for, to go to bed feeling okay and just sleep away? So we all know, however, that many people are not spared suffering. They have no choice but to endure. And this process of uh, suffering and endurance that produces character and hope, we read those words pretty lightly, but the living of them is no picnic, I'm sure. Even if we love God and we trust him, completely. Uh, we still have human emotions, big time, that we need to work through. We are often, we're grieving, we're angry, we're scared. That is all part of it. So, as I said, that progression is no picnic at all. Today I want to tell you an awful story that has an oddly happy ending. <laughs> um, my friend Caroline is on my mind this week. She's been on my mind for quite a while, actually. Four years ago, when Caroline was 51 years old, remember that, she was only 51 years old, she was diagnosed with stage three colon cancer. And of course, stage three means that it's in your lymph nodes and it's ready to move. Well, let me be exact. <clears throat> she was diagnosed with colorectal cancer. And um, that's all I'm gonna say about that because you can use your imagination. Caroline is the regional manager for a national dialysis company. She's a real suit. I don't even know how many clinics she manages. Uh, and she makes a ton of money. Married, three children, at that time, uh, two were teenagers and one was already in college. So all of that, yes, but Caroline was also the kind of person who was very strong and stoic. Uh, she didn't admit when she felt bad or tired or anything like that. She was just in the habit of taking care of other people and muscling her way through whatever she had to do. Well. Now we have this diagnosis and treatment is beginning. And from the very beginning, from the very first diagnostic test, Caroline suffered pain and humiliation. 
she went through <clears throat> really brutal chemo and radiation. They were really going after this. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen anyone so sick. During the course of all of this, this part of the illness, Caroline had four different surgeries. And I can't even remember how many rounds of chemo and radiation. So the day came that Caroline got to ring the bell. I don't know if you've rung the bell, I have. There's usually in um, every chemo room and every radiation center, there's a bell. And when the patient reaches their very last treatment, they get to ring the bell really loudly and everyone in the whole place cheers and applauds and because we're done, we're done. Well, next scan, six months later, the cancer was back. It was in Caroline's lung and there was a fair amount of it. She had more chemo, more radiation. <clears throat> she was deathly sick yet again. She had a pretty extensive lung surgery, which is not an easy surgery. And she was getting to the point where every scan just filled her with terror. Uh, cancer is such an emotional roller coaster, you know? Uh, there are these moments when you are declared in remission and you think, oh, it's over, we did it, yes. Uh, and then the roller coaster goes down and it comes back and you know the drill. Well, Caroline finished another course of chemo. It didn't make it all go away. It did help a little bit. And she was told that she was not a candidate for more lung surgery. In fact, she's not a candidate for surgery ever. She's been too weakened and debilitated by the chemo and the previous surgeries. Now, I've talked to Caroline every single day for the past four years. The only time we missed a day was when she was literally <clears throat> too weak, too sick to talk. And during those conversations, she and I kind of learned together about endurance. That is not our favorite word, is it? Endurance. Because, you know, there was so much prayer going on. My goodness, she was on every prayer list in the US, I'm pretty sure. Everybody was praying for her healing, her physical healing, and that this would just go away. But nothing miraculous was happening. Caroline just had to endure. That's when she discovered, and I discovered along with her, that this passage from Romans that Elaine just read is true. Her character was strengthened. She had to learn to throw herself on God's mercy like never before. She couldn't get by <clears throat> on her own strength and determination. She was 100% reliant on God to even do what she had to do on any given day. She clung to God probably for the first time in her life. She needed God so badly that she clung to him like, what, a life raft after the Titanic. And you know what? Caroline is a different person. She is so honest now. She has nothing to prove to anyone. She is more compassionate. She's more understanding of not only other people's weaknesses, but her own as well. And what started out as humiliation for Caroline has turned into humility. And honestly, I think that actual humility takes more strength and courage than anything else. Now, four years later, <clears throat> Caroline has started what they are calling maintenance chemo. She'll be on this chemo for the rest of her life. She's likely to live several more years. The chemo will uh, keep the cancer at bay, hold it back, keep it from spreading. And the side effects are such that she can live with. They're not as brutal as these other chemos have been. So here's Caroline having gone through all of this, knowing that it is not all going to go away. And she is actually really 
filled with hope. She is going to see her daughter <clears throat> graduate from nursing school with all A's, mind you, following in her footsteps. She is so proud and delighted and happy. She will live to see her first grandchild. And those are wonderful things. There are so many wonderful things that she is filled with hope about. But more than anything else, her love for God and her trust and her faith in God have increased. Now that's miraculous. Caroline has learned that she will be okay. In her inner being, she will be okay no matter what happens. I think about this a lot too. These letters that Paul wrote to the churches in the New Testament, he was writing to people who every day of their lives were subject to arrest, betrayal, um, torture, execution every single day. And honestly, I cannot remember one time when Paul prayed for anything miraculous to happen. He prayed that they would have strength to continue the ministry. He prayed for himself that he would be able to minister even though he was in chains in prison. He prayed for their character, uh, their spirit, that they would be comforted in their inner being, those kinds of prayers. If it were us, wouldn't we all be praying, make this go away, make it better, heal her, release him? Of course we would. Paul prayed that they would be comforted in their inner being. Life calls on all of us at one time or another to suffer and to endure. And of course, what we most want is for it all to go away. But I've learned, and I'm still learning, that God is most interested in the things that are eternal. Not our bodies, which are frail and will betray us without warning, but our spirits, our souls. Now, we are more earthbound. We want to live a healthy and happy life here. So this is hard for us. We don't always get what we want. But I have seen the truth and I've seen the reality of this Romans passage in Caroline's life and in the lives of others who didn't receive the gift of dying in their sleep like my mom did. And it reminds me that whatever happens, whatever happens, we have to cling to God. We have to humble ourselves enough to just throw ourselves on his mercy and know deep in our inner being that we will be okay, no matter what. Amen.
Let's pray together. Our gracious God, as usual, we come to you first to tell you that we love you. <clears throat> we are so very grateful for your love for us. Grateful that we can call you Father, that we are part of your family, that each one of us is loved and cared for by you. We thank you for your grace and your forgiveness, your steadfast love, your provision in our lives. Lord, we, we live and move and have our being in you. And we thank you for every moment. Lord, we come to you also to lift up to you those who are sick or having problems in this fellowship or another. We think of Jimmy, who is in rehab right now and is facing more surgery. There are others, Lord, in this congregation who need to feel your healing touch today. We think of those who are depressed or struggling with loneliness, grieving. Lord, they often feel that they are truly alone in this world, and we pray that you would comfort them with your presence and help them to heal. Lord, we give you thanks for the mission that PCA or PCE uh, is involved with. We thank you most especially at this moment for the work that is being done in the Talbot Interfaith Shelter and for the help that they have just received. We ask you, Lord, that you would give each of us a heart to help those who need your love and your provision. Lord, we think about the world right now beset with problems. We think about the riots that are going on in so many, so many cities, um, the violence, the looting, the unrest. We pray, Lord, that the leaders in this country and the leaders in governments, uh, governors and states and uh, chiefs of police and all who are involved would truly have your wisdom, that there could be forgiveness and reconciliation on both sides. Let this be a new start, Lord, when we can talk to, in, to each other and listen to each other and help each one of us, Lord, to look to ourselves with rigorous honesty to see if there is any scrap of racism or prejudice that lives in our hearts. Help us to confess it to you and seek your healing. We think of all of those, Lord, who are suffering right now with COVID-19. We pray that you would get them through this, that you would touch and heal them. We pray for those, Lord, who are quarantined, who are under restrictions, more or less homebound, we ask, Lord, that you would help them to get through this with as much peace of mind and joy as possible. Remind them, please, Lord, that you, they are not alone, that you are right there to care for them and love them. Lord, I will always pray today and always for the Presbyterian Church of Easton. I pray that every person who serves and worships here would be strengthened even now, today. That if there are estrangements, there would be a healing in relationships. Once again, forgiveness and reconciliation. I pray, Lord, that there would be a renewed commitment to missions, to remembering that there are those who need you but do not know you. Help us, Lord, to reach out and love others as we serve you. Lord, we know that our lives are rich and full in our inner beings, and all of that is due to your love and your grace and the gift of your son Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And in your going, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you and each one whom you love this day and every day. And all God's people said, Amen.